what's up guys hope you're all well we are here for uh, just a quick video i think today or tonight uh just gonna go through the wrestling for the weekend mainly concentrating on the wwe stuff but uh I'll quickly make some predictions for the new japan stuff as well oh i'm looking pale so obviously welcome to ace podcast nation it's a new channel doing podcast shows interviews on wrestling football mental health films movies tvs everything movies films jesus christ tired i almost what three kids do to you uh yeah, it's just your one-stop shop for interviews, guests, podcasts, everything. You name it, we've got it. So, yesterday I did a podcast with Phil Brown, football journalist. I did two. I did one, um, like a short half-hour one, on Man United after Fergie. And then we did another one, which was difficult and emotional, which was about depression and grief. Uh, and we both talked about some of our own sort of personal issues. Really grateful to Phil for not just coming on, but to be like so open and honest and talk about stuff which is really, really hard to talk about. And like that's pretty much, the, you know, I've spoken to him a couple of times over DM on Twitter, but that's the first time I've spoken to him in person. Um, and, and yeah, I appreciate that a lot. <clears throat> uh, earlier in the week I did an interview with the actor and filmmaker Johnny Owen which is going really well uh, we put that up yesterday morning and it's done over well over 100 views already which is the most so far um, and we picked up a few extra subscribers so welcome I know uh, <clears throat> we had our first comment as well from uh, the guy what was his name uh, Jay I think it was who actually asked about wrestling. So even though it's going to be a shorter video, I wanted to do it, seeing as he asked. And I said all along I was going to cover wrestling as well. Um, I'm not going to cover it generally, like after Monday, after Raw, and after SmackDown, and after NXT, because it's, one, it's too much. I can't keep up with it all. And also, two... <clears throat> I like my pod wrestling podcasts from Fightful, to be honest. I get all my news from there. They're the most trusted site out there. So shout out to them. They're the place to be over the weekend for wrestling, UFC, everything. Definitely, I'm hoping to get <coughs> uh, a couple of their podcasters on to speak to as well because I think they'll be really interesting and really cool. They're a good bunch of, good bunch of lads. And anyone who's obviously got Fightful Select will have seen me before, uh, where I did a couple of Fightful books at show on their Patreon service with Sean, which was loads of fun. And um, yeah, I'd definitely be doing some of them either here or with Sean on Fightful probably, because uh, they are loads of fun. So, um, so before I get just into this now, we got. Tomorrow I'm going to drop the podcast which I did with Phil about football and Man United after Fergie. Um, Sunday will be, there's just a short video I did with Johnny Owen when I did his interview which was just like similar to the Cade Callis one we did which was just like quick fire questions, just like a two or three minute video just to keep the content ticking over. Got some exciting guests next week. Um, I was supposed to speak to an ex Cardiff City footballer today, but we've had to postpone that till next Friday, which was a bit gutting, but, you know, he's busy people, and I'm just grateful that they're willing to speak to me, especially because it's such a new channel. Uh, you know, new channel, not very many subscribers. I'm relying on people doing it out of the goodness of their heart and just giving me their time. And so far, I've been pleasantly surprised pretty much all the people I've asked have been, yeah, of course, we'll sort it out. So, yeah, some interesting ones coming up, some some different ones as well. 
got um, one with a doctor coming up, which is going to be really interesting because that's going to be like a, a whole different world to what world I come from. So I'm quite looking forward to that one. The um, I think that probably won't be this week. I'm speaking to him this week, but I won't be recording with him to probably to the week after. Um, he's a very, very busy guy. Uh, so again, I'm just grateful that he's going to come on. Um, uh, who else are we going to speak to? Speak to uh, hopefully going to speak to an owner of a designer fashion label, which I'm very excited about. That's really cool, and I like the clothes as well. So it just makes it that bit cooler. Um, who else we got? Well, this I got an MP coming on, um, children's TV presenter at some point. Um, I sent out some messages today to like to one one person. I won't say the name because I'm not expecting a reply. But like, I let's just say I <coughs> I'm shooting out of my reach there. I think, but. If you don't ask, you never know. So, hey, I didn't expect Johnny Owen to come on and do it, and he did. He's a legend of a guy. Same with Phil Brown. Didn't expect these people to do it. You know, they're well-known people on social media and in there. And you know, Johnny Owen's a pretty film star. Like, made some quality films and quality football documentaries. So, for him to give me time of day and speak to me for an hour of his very busy time was you know you don't get much cooler than that let's be fair um so yeah it's going to be interesting so we have tonight well this morning in the uk but tonight everywhere else or in the us nxt takeover new york which is always the best wrestling show of the weekend let's be honest it's the card is unbelievable um, I'm a big, big fan of, like, Gargano, Adam Cole is one of my favourite wrestlers. Velveteen Dream is, like, the future of the business. Same as Matt Riddle. He is just top, top guy. He, I think, next, I think that next WrestleMania, Matt Riddle should retire Brock. I don't know whether they'll go down that route, but they should. Um, you've got the War Raiders, Alistair Black, Ricochet, Pete Dunn, UK Zone, and he is, I, when I spoke to Cade Callis, who spoke so highly of him, he's just a top, top wrestler. Walter is just a beast. It's just going to be an awesome show. And like even the women's match, it's like you've got Io Shirai, I think best female wrestler in the world. Kyrie Zane's not much far behind. Bianca Belair. The future of women's wrestling. Shayna Baszler, who has just come on so much over the last year. Um, so let's start with the women's match. It's a fatal four way for the women's championship. It's Shayna Baszler, champion versus Io Shirai, Kairi Zane, and versus Bianca Belair. So <clears throat> I, uh, I think they'll probably open with this. Either this or the tag match, maybe. It's they could, I don't know, they could open with this or the UK Championship match. But if Shayna Baszler's not going up, then I think she should retain. But I would like her to turn up on Raw on Monday. I would like Becky to come out in all her glory with the two belts. And be like, no one can touch me, blah de blah de blah. And Rhonda's gone, or it go in, it maybe she'll appear and that'll be her last one. Maybe she appears and says, I'm going, but I've got someone who wants to have a crack at you. And you bring up Shayna and she could be flanked by the horsewomen if you want. They're very green, but I mean you could they could do a lot of standing around and beat downs without getting too exposed but then you look at the iconics and naya and tamina and they've looked very very sloppy in the ring especially these last couple of weeks their match on raw on monday was dreadful 
and I don't remember the Iconics being that, I don't remember them being that bad or that sloppy in the ring in NXT. So I don't know what it is which has made them go down that route, it's, but they certainly have, and it's very clear to see that they need work. But from a character point of view, they're excellent, and I really enjoy them. And I love their pose as well. It's great. Or should I say it's iconic. Yeah, so I think I think you've got to put the belt on Io Shirai. <sighs> Unless, if they're going to do Io Shirai and Kyrie Zayn versus Bailey and Sasha Banks for the tag team titles, if the tag team titles are going to float, then... I could see them putting on Bianca Belair. I don't expect it to be a long match. I think it'll be a lot of spots, a lot of big moments, and I think it'll be quite quick, impactful match and over within 10 minutes. I think it'll be, uh, if they start, I think especially, I think it'll just be spot, spot, spot near falls and then someone's going to take it I think Io Shirai is the right call best wrestler best female wrestler in the world and she's up in the, probably the top 10 wrestlers in the world she is incredible uh, so yeah I think they should go with her uh, next we've got the WWE UK Championship between Pete Dunn and Walter uh, this is tough for me man because Pete Dunne's one of my favourites he's the longest reigning champ in all of WWE it's like 700 days or something ridiculous but I think the time's come to take it off him I think you can't beat Walter at the moment he's coming he's hot the crowd are behind him gotta gotta take him out and I think maybe if they're going to move anyone up from NXT like the US version of NXT after Wrestlemania Pete Dunn going over to the US NXT for a proper run would not be a bad thing he's done all he can do in the UK championship uh, U UK NXT and unless he's going to continue his program with Walter everything else is a step down for him because he's been at the very top of that brand well over a year or since it started but he's been champ for well over a year two years nearly I think it's going to be an awesome match I think it's really going to be and it's going to be good to see Pete Dunne work with a bigger guy because a lot of the guys he's worked with have been a similar stature it's been the odd one who's been big guys but a lot of the NXT guys are similar in size they're quite small some of them I think it's going to be an awesome match. The crowd is going to be really hot for it. And I think that's why part of me thinks they may go with that as the opener. Because Walter is going to be super over. He doesn't work in America very often. Hence they tried. They wanted him for NXT US. And he wouldn't come. But he would go to the UK. Will come in for the tapings. Go back out and work the big shows in America. You if people don't want to do it and they can make enough money not doing it, you just got to take them when you can get them. When they're that good and that over, you just take what you can get. You just want them in your promotion, in your product, and all over your TV. So, yeah, I think as much as I love Pete Dunne and I'd like to see him win, I think Walter's the right shout. I'd be very disappointed, I think, from a booking standpoint if they was to to beat Walter in his first big match. Going to be some big chops in that one. Big chops. Pete Dunne's going to have a red chest when he's said and done. Walter will probably have some broken fingers. It's going to be fun. Broken fingers. My, my villain t-shirt. Don't think he'll be at NXT uh, or WrestleMania somehow, but he is fighting for the ROH title in a ladder match, which will be good. We'll talk about that. Next up, NXT Tag Team Championships. Wall Raiders versus Alistair Black 
and Ricochet. Probably going to be Ricochet and Alistair Black's last NXT uh, appearance. And it's a weird one because technically they could finish WrestleMania as NXT champs and SmackDown champs. And everyone thought they were going to be going for the Raw titles against the Revival, which is a baffling decision in itself. Because they've had that program and they've be beaten them in non-title matches, it's been built up and built up. Even last Monday, it was they sort of lost an account out victory and then knocked them out afterwards. So it's like they got to be built into the WrestleMania match, but nope, they're in the multi-man SmackDown match, which you know they could have been. They could have gone one on one with or two on two with the Revival, and had Sanity in that match or the Hardys in that match. It's, a puzzling one, I gotta be honest. But as much as they could make them seem a really big deal by having two sets of belts when they come out on Monday or Tuesday on TV, I think the War Raiders is the right call, and I wouldn't be surprised to see. A new team attack the War Raiders afterwards. Whether that's a new team, a debutant team, I don't know if they've got any yet lined up. Or whether it will just be Forgotten Sons or someone like that. Uh, what's the other guys? I forget their names, but like Forgotten Sons seem like they're being lined up for a big push. Heels to go against War Raiders, so I suppose that'll be a good shout. Should be a very good match, though. They've got good chemistry, these two teams. And Ricochet and Alistair Black are just incredible. Ricochet is just out of this world. He does some crazy stuff. And he always turns it up for NXT takeovers. So it should be good. Next up, we've got the NXT North American Championship, which is the match I'm looking forward to the most. Velveteen Dream, the champ, versus Matt Riddle. Ooh. Hose me down. Whew. It's going to be good. So good. Both guys are just so, so talented and so, so over with the crowd. It's a real tough one to call. It's going to be an awesome match. I think... Riddle's a good appointment, a good opponent for Velveteen Dream because sometimes at the takeovers, Velveteen Dream gets a bit excitable and a bit too caught up in the moment, and he goes a bit quick. And Riddle's a good appointment, good opponent to slow him down and have a really good hard hitting technical match. And I think it's going to be excellent. And I don't want to see him lo Matt Riddle lose. As much as I love Velveteen Dream and I find him exceptionally entertaining, Matt Riddle cannot lose. Cannot lose. He is not like Walter, but obviously he's been around a bit longer. He, not ready. You cannot beat him yet. Um, I think Velveteen Dream should go up to the main roster. I think he'd be a great fit on SmackDown as a fresh chan, fresh challenger for Samoa Joe for the. United States Championship if he retains at WrestleMania. Uh, yeah, so I think put it on Riddle. Pete Dunne versus Matt Riddle sounds pretty good for the North American title. Post, uh, post Mania. So, yeah, I think Matt Riddle has to win. Cannot beat him yet. The Vacant. NXT Championship, two out of three falls. Johnny Gargano versus Adam Cole. Oof. I see on social media, everyone's like, Johnny Gargano's got to win, got to do this, got to, got to win, got to win. Be a sh disgrace if he doesn't. I disagree. I think... Anything other than him beating Champa for the title will feel hollow and just won't feel right. 
I think he needs to go to the main roster anyway. He's already had a taste. I think they should put him up there as the new top super baby face in the line of what Daniel Bryan was before and how Rey Mysterio used to be all those years ago. Get him up there. Just get some fresh, fresh names and fresh faces in the upper tier of NXT. Adam Cole as champ with the Undisputed Era behind him. Perfect. He is super over, but he's got that. They're just so good at playing that twatty heel douchebags who just rub people the wrong way. If, and if, big if, if Velveteen Dream is going to beat Matt Riddle, I'm tempted, I'd be tempted to do something with Undisputed Era, maybe costing Riddle, if they have to have Riddle lose. And then maybe you can move to Adam Cole versus Matt Riddle for the NXT title then as your first program for Adam Cole. The problem being is you don't want to beat Riddle. So you maybe that's too early. Maybe do that SummerSlam time or Money in the Bank. SummerSlam would be good. So Adam Cole versus Matt Riddle at SummerSlam. A SummerSlam takeover would be lit. It'd be real good. You got Keith Lee, maybe Keith Lee, Adam Cole, but I mean, again, they've got a lot of new guys who have already lost or haven't lost at all, so you don't want to beat them. But I would, for the in terms of this match, it's going to be awesome. Gargano, very, very well. He's never let us down at Takeover. His matches are always awesome, and I think that. Him and Adam Cole will have an incredible match. Two out of three fours means it'll be just awesome. Ten, you know, everyone will be on tender hooks. It's just going to be so nerve-wrackingly good. It's just going to be excitement personified. The whole card is just going to be incredible. If I wake up tomorrow and I watch it and it's not very good, I will be very, very surprised. They very rarely let us down. And it's like a super indie that it is. It is super indie. And this card is a super indie card. So, <clears throat> I'm going to quickly, before we move to WrestleMania, I'm going to quickly run through the New Japan Ring of Honor card over in Madison Square Garden just tomorrow night. I'm not going to go through it quite as much as I just did with NXT. I am pretty familiar with it all, but just for time-wise, I'm very tired. I'm in a lot of pain. So, let's go. So, you've got the Honor Rumble. A few names announced. Justin Thunder Liger. Kenny King, PJ Black, the Bouncers, Cheeseburger, you know, just your average rumble. I, I, from the names that are there and the names I think they'll have, I would like to see Juice and Thunder Liger win it as a, I think it's, I think I'm right in saying it's the first time he's been there uh, at Madison, uh, Madison Square Garden. So, yeah, give him the win because he's on his way out at the end of this year. So give him the win in the Honor Rumble, I say. Then you've got the Women of Honor World Championship, which is Mayo Iwatani and Kelly Klein. I've got to say, the, the women's wrestling in ROH has not caught my fancy as much as it has elsewhere. They, I don't know what it is that's missing. There's just something they haven't quite clicked. I thought they would with Tennille Dashwood. So I'm not massively looking forward to this film. Uh, this film. This match. But 
I'm going to say that Kelly Klein wins. Why not? Here we go, into the real good stuff. Rev Pro British Heavyweight Championship match. Zack Sabre Jr. Champion versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. Wow. Now that is going to be a bloody match. I love Zack Sabre Jr. Does nobody in the whole wrestling world does what he does as well as he does it. So good. So talented, so creative, and they will have an awesome match. If they've got their working boots on, or if Tanahashi's got his working boots on, obviously he's in a lot of pain at the age he's at. But if he's got his working shoes on, oh yeah, that's going to be an unbelievable, proper match. I'm going to say Zach's going to retain, I think, depending on... No, I think he should retain. I don't want Rev Pro to become like just New Japan UK. I feel like I don't know though. Tanahashi as their champ. Tanahashi as their champion could be like a big deal. Big shows in Rev Pro. Then haven't you got Tanahashi as champion? Mm -hmm. Okay, well now let's go with Tanahashi to win that. And then we got title versus title. The never open weight champion Will Ospreay v Jeff Cobb, the ROH television champion. That is going to be creative. It's going to be just balls to the wall. Ospreay is going to sell like a motherfucker. He's going to fly around. Cobb's going to lay it in and he's going to be. 10, 12 minutes of just pure mayhem. And I think at a big show like this, they're going to really want to show what they can do. Jeff Cobb is the guy for indie wrestling, I feel, for the next few years at least. So, yeah, I think he's the guy that they need to push and book and protect in terms of Ring of Honor. Uh, Osprey, I just as I always do when he has a big show, I just hope he doesn't kill himself and doesn't hurt himself. As long as he comes back safe, I know he'll be awesome and he'll do some crazy shit. Jeff Cobb's got to win. He's got to win because they're building him up as this unbeatable monster. And we've got. The IWGP Intercontinental Championship, Tetsu Naito versus Kota Ibushi. Good God. Again, I just hope they don't kill each other. No, Ibushi's going to do something crazy. Naito's going to land on his neck a few times. Mm, just one of these days, man, they're going to do it. And it's going to be one too many neck bumps, head bumps. It's not good for you. Take it for someone who's had spinal surgery. It's not good. Be an awesome match. Kota Ibushi to take the Intercontinental Championship, I think. But uh, that is an awesome match. And it will be a very, very good one. Roosh versus Dalton Castle. Gone off. Well, I've not been as into Dalton Castle as I was a couple of years ago. He's had a lot of injuries and I feel like he's perhaps still struggling. Still seems to be missing us something. But Roosh, I really like. I don't know a great deal about him. I haven't seen a great deal of him. But... He looks, he's got a great, great look. Great, great look. And I feel like they should have a good match. You know, it certainly shouldn't be a bad match. But Roosh has got to win. They're building him up now as he's like the new sign-in. He's in there. He's got everything they need. The only thing perhaps he struggles with is his English. But, I mean, these days you can work around that. Look at New Japan. 
people love the Japanese wrestlers from like America and the UK and Australia. They love them. You know, they you don't need to speak English well to get over. You can do your promos in your native language and still get over. I wish they'd had Oscar Asuka do her promos in Japanese because she's so expressive that I feel like she would still get over even though people couldn't understand what she was saying. Also, really like the gimmick that they did for one night with Rusev and Nakamura, Nakamura when they Nakamura was speaking Japanese, Rusev was speaking Bulgarian, and Lana was translating for both of them. I thought that was hysterical, and I thought that would have been an awesome gimmick. But yeah, you don't speaking English is not much, not as much of a necessity as it was back in the day. Uh, so yeah, Roosh will win that. He should win that as well. Bully Ray Open Challenge Street Fights. Bully Ray versus Juice Robinson. Well, Juice Robinson needs wins. He seems to be lo Seems to have since he was the U.S. champ last year, and then he lost it, and then he won it back of Cody. He just seems to have lost that momentum and that steam that he had before that and he was so he was doing so well so over he's having great matches and, and he did really well around G1 time and then he's just lost a bit of steam but I did think that maybe they were going to um, I think Flip Gordon was slotted for this position but he uh, his knee locked when he got out of bed the other week in his recovery from a knee injury from before and I think he's got a serious knee injury again which sucks because all his moves are based on high flying and flips and I think he's just I'm not sure if it's the same knee injury or if it's another knee injury which is caused by the problems with the other knee but I wish him well and I can't wait till he's back because I'm a big fan big big fan of Flip Gordon uh, Juice Robinson to beat Bully Ray. Bully Ray is just there to put people over at the moment. I'd expect... Um, oh, what's his name? I forget. The owner guy. I can't remember his name. Sorry, guys. Uh, the Ring of Honor. Uh, Kerry Selkin, I think it is. Isn't it? I, expect, I wouldn't be surprised if he gets involved and hits Bully Ray with chain or chair or something. Just because they've had a bit of an ongoing feud. Uh, IGP, IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship three-way match. Chaiji Ishimori versus Bandito versus Dragon Lee. Oh my God. That is another one which is just going to be insane. Taiji Ishimori is so talented, so good. Ever since he came back to New Japan, he's just been amazing as Bone Soldier with the Bullet Club. Really enjoyed his work. Barely had a bad match, if at all. Bandito is obviously, we saw him at All In. That was my first experience of him. He's a very impressive dude, can do some awesome stuff. Flying around, Dragon Lee is one of the best wrestlers in the world. They're going to have an incredible match. Again, you're just hoping that they don't end up killing themselves because it's such a big show. They want to do something incredible. They want to amaze the fans. But they can have a great match without killing themselves and without hurting themselves, without putting themselves at risk. I know it's all a risk. But some of these guys, they do... They push it. They push the envelope and they sometimes push it too much, maybe. Um, I'd like to see... I'd like to see Bandido win it, but because it's the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship, I think Taiji Ishimori will probably win because he's the only full-time New Japan guy on the Dragon Lee. I suppose could they could put it on him as well. So. Winners take all 
did that to my before. Four-way tag team match. Gorillas of Destiny. The IWGP Tag Team Champions versus Villain Enterprises. PCO and Brody King. The ROH World Tag Team Champions versus Eva and Sanada. Los Ingobernables versus the Briscoes. Oh my gosh. That's going to be a brutal. They are going to beat the shit out of each other. Looking at the matches, that's the one that's going to have some blood. The Briscoes always seem to get busted open because they're just stiff. Yeah, that's going to be brutal. But it'll be good. Again, there's so many good matches. You look at that NXT card for tonight. You look at this card for tomorrow. And then you look at the Mania card. And you look at the guys who are not on Mania. It's incredible standard of wrestling. An incredible level of card over a three-day period. It's just... Mind blowing, mind blowing stuff. I think <clears throat> I wouldn't be surprised if Villain Enterprise take everything. They seem to be positioning them because I think they've got the trio, they've got the trio tag ROH, uh, the ROH trios titles, I believe, or well, they did. Obviously, they're in this to get the IWGP Tag Team Championships and they were already ROH Tag Team Champions. And they seem to be positioning Marty as well to take the ROH title. So, will they just give them, a, give them all the gold and cement them as the dominant stable? I would. But I don't know. I guess it depends how much work they're going to do with New Japan. But, I mean, they can drop the title somewhere along the way if necessary. Yeah, I'd go with PCO and Brody King, Villain Enterprises, for that one. Jay Lethal versus Matt Taven versus Marty Skrull, Skrull, Skrull in a ladder match ROH title. My boy Marty is going to win the title sorry not even gonna hide my bias get it on him get it off Jay Lethal I, Jay Lethal's a fantastic wrestler super talented guy but he bores me to tears when he's ROH champion I just don't enjoy it Matt Taven has grown on me he's improved loads but I don't want to see him as ROH champion my skull is the way to go. Jay White versus Kazuchika Akada for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. It's going to be a good match. Very good match, I would imagine. Jay White's been on fire. I do think that they will close with it because it's the IWGP heavyweight championship but I think they're going to have lots of interference from the Bullet Club so what you do what do you do I don't I, 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 Okada's not going to win it but I just think people want to see they want to see him just have a great match. They don't want to see him. Uh, they don't want to see Fale. And as much as they love the Bullet Club, they don't want to see him interrupting this match. I think the people want to see a traditional New Japan match. That's what people have been crying out for with all their American shows. Is a legit New Japan card. And this is the first time they've got some legit New Japan matches on their US show. So I think the people want to see Jay White versus Okada. 
in a New Japan Classic. And Jay White will win, I believe. On to the big show for the 20 million matches. So, I'm not going to spend ages on each match because we're 40 minutes in already and it's a long card. It's a long card. It's a 24 hour long show. They start now. They should finish by Sunday night. Okay, so you got the kickoff show. <coughs> Excuse me. Cruiserweight Championship match. Buddy Murphy versus Tony Nese. I like Tony Nese a lot, but I can't see him beating Buddy Murphy. These guys deserve better than the kickoff show, but on WrestleMania is the one show you can probably excuse them being on the kickoff show. They'll have a good match. Depends how much time they get and if they let them go and if they play adverts during the match and all this kind of crap that they normally pull. But, fingers crossed. Uh, WrestleMania Battle Royal Women's. Oscar better win, and she better win by eliminating every fucker. She deserves so much better. This bullshit they pulled with her. Anyway, yeah. So, Oscar to win that. I expect Naomi, probably Ruby Riot, Nikki Cross to all have a good, you know, go deep into it. On to the giant battle royal. Oh my god. Jobbers RS with a few big names in. So, what I think they will do with Braun Strowman. Is they will have the two guys from Saturday Night Live somehow eliminate him or he'll chase him and he'll go over the top rope and eliminate himself and then he'll chase him throughout the night. Blah, 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 blah. Boy, crap. He'll be out. I hope. I hope they have Chad Gable win it. Uh, but I think... I think that they'll get to EC3 to kickstart his push. I think they're waiting to get WrestleMania out of the way. So they may as well give it to him now. So he can start his push. Because he is far too talented and far too good on the mic to be doing these shitty comedy skits in the back and not performing in a big feud. Raw Tag Team Championships, The Revival versus Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder. So here's the thing. The Revival should be facing Ricochet and Alistair Black because they have a feud and a story which has been built up over a number of weeks, if not months. Instead... Ricochet and Alistair Black are in the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match in a multi-man. And Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder are facing the Revival after a two-minute video after Raw, which barely anyone's seen. Bizarre. I won the Revival to win, but they won't. Kurt Hawkins will pick up his win because it's WrestleMania, blah, 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 blah feel good pop and then they'll lose the titles the next night on Raw hopefully it'll be to the Authors of Pain who are coming up or a debutant I don't know, Undisputed Era or something cool like that But or even lose the titles to Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper on Monday that'll do, I'll take that Smackdown Tag Team Championships Fatal 4-Way Usos versus The Bar versus Rusev and Shinsuke Nakamura Versus Ricochet and Alistair Black. Ricochet and Alistair Black will win this, I believe, because they're pushing them, they're protecting them. It's a good way to get them real over, real quick. Ricochet will do some incredible shit. Win the titles on the biggest show of the year. Start the post-mania program on Monday. Or Tuesday, Smackdown. Women's Tag Team Championship Fatal 4-Way Match. Now this 
this could be nasty. This could be real, real bad. Beth Phoenix, Natalia versus Nia Jax, Tamina, uh, Nia Jax, Tamina versus the Iconics versus Sasha and Bailey. Beth Phoenix has looked really, really good since she's come back. Natalia is excellent. The Iconics, as we touched on before, they in NXT I thought they were excellent or really good, and their character work is outstanding. Since the main roster run, their ring work has been poor, real poor. But the character work is so good. So they are above Nia and Tamina for me. Uh, Sasha and Bailey got to win. Got to win. Build them up and build them up. And when they lose, whether they lose to the Riot Squad or whoever, make it mean something because they've had a long run. WWE Championship match. Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston. I think this will go on before the women's match. Kofi's going to win, obviously. He's got it. But you've got Kofi, Rollins, and Becky. All going, all fan favourites, all going for the championships. Not all of them will win. That's not how Vince works. If I had to pick one to lose, me personally, it would probably be, probably be Kofi, maybe. Just because I love Daniel Bryan's heel work. But then the story doesn't make, the story makes sense for Kofi to win it. So, yeah, I think Kofi will win. <clears throat> and he should. He deserves it. He's over as hell. And it'll be a good match as well. WWE Intercontinental Championship. Bobby Lashley versus the Demon King Finn Balor. Well. What I would like to see happen. Is Leo Rush get involved. And the Good Brothers come and make. To even things out. And then the Demon King win. And have a little. Club moment reunion. But they seem to be in the dog house so we will bank on that but I think Finn will win as the Demon King he wins whenever he's uh, got the paint on United States Championship Samoa Joe Rey Mysterio I, I, I raised carrying an injury so they said on Tuesday and I've heard that that's a legit injury so there may be a change, maybe Andrade comes in or Ali. Um, I just want Samoa Joe to retain it. Okay. I don't think he will, but I want him to. If it's against Mysterio, maybe Mysterio should win so he can complete the set and get the Grand Slam, as it were. Uh, Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. Roman Reigns is going to win, even because it's just Roman Reigns, but also Drew McIntyre has had the better of him for like the last eight weeks or something. He's just beat him down and beat him down and beat him down and beat him down. So Roman's going to win, and obviously he's going to win anyway, coming back from a serious illness. WrestleMania, first big match or sing big, big singles match. Of course he's going to win. Uh, AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. I really enjoyed the segment for this on Tuesday. It was real good, really entertaining. They had some good, uh, good promo work. I think, I think AJ will win because they did the RKO spot on Tuesday, which I think if they, if Randy was going to win, they'd have done that spot at Mania because that's what they do, the big RKO spot. Shane McMahon versus The Miz, a Falls Count Anywhere match. Not really interested in this one. I'm assuming The Miz will win unless Shane 
has some sort of interference. Um, yeah, I, don't, I think either Shane will have some sort of interference on his behalf to pick up a win, turn someone heel or whatnot, or The Miz will throw Shane off something. So instead of Shane jumping off something, he will throw him. But yeah, I think The Miz will win. Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin. Yeah. Less said about that, the better. Kurt Angle's farewell match, I think. I think Kurt will squash him in two minutes. And then John Cena will he'll say Kurt Angle will cut a promo saying something like a I want someone with uh intensity or ruthless aggression or similar to his a promo where Cena came out to debut and Cena will come out and they'll have a match is my prediction. Triple H's career on the line, Triple H versus Batista. I'm real happy that Batista's got this match just so that he can he's wanted it for so long and he begged for it and he begged for it. So I'm really pleased that he's got that. Um, so I think he will definitely be losing to Triple H and go out and retire, as he should be able to on his own terms. And that's a no holds barred match as well. Then we have uh, Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins. Oh, God, end it, end it. I just need Brock Lesnar to go away for a bit, get the title off him, get the champion back on Raw regularly, and then bring Brock back later in the year for a feud with someone, not over the title. Please, for the love of God. Winner takes all. Raw versus uh, Raw and SmackDown Women's Championship match triple threat: Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch. Well, we know what that is going to be. What what it should be? It better be Becky Lynch tapping out Ronda Rousey, taking all the gold, and celebrating to a big, huge pop. My one concern is that Vince McMahon loves to swerve people and he loves Charlotte Flair and everyone's expecting Becky to win and I think he'd like to play spoiler by having Charlotte win. I hope not though because Becky deserves to finish Mania as the champ after tapping out Ronda. That's the way the story should finish in my opinion. I think Elias will get interrupted by Bray Wyatt. That's my prediction. Okay. That's me done because my phone is about to run out of battery. It's a lot of wrestling over the next three days, but a lot of awesome, awesome matches and awesome cards. So. <clears throat> Hit me up, tell me what you're looking forward to, tell me in the comments what you think of my predictions, what you would predict differently, what you would book differently. Uh, you can contact me on Twitter on acecast underscore nation. Let me know what you think. Cheers, guys.